Welcome to the Anxiety Coaches Podcast, a relaxing and informative show where we explore anxiety, panic, and PTSD, sharing how you can overcome them for life. Aloha, welcome back to the Anxiety Coaches Podcast. I'm your host and coach, Gina Ryan, and I am so happy to be with you again today as together we can consider the many ways to bring your mind and body back to its natural peace and calm. In today's episode, I want to talk about reducing anxiety by teaching your body how to relax on purpose. And I know you think, well, I don't, how else would I relax except on purpose? But I think we're not paying attention really because we can actually teach our body to relax on purpose, like when we are telling it to do it. And we want to do this routinely if we can. When we struggle with anxiety, we are in um, a, a tension mode. The, the tension in our body is ongoing and it's a lot more than we care uh, to carry around with us. And we would do well to learn to practice some bits and pieces of relaxation that can be done on purpose, on demand. And when we get stressed or upset, um, the body tenses and it tenses up for a reason. When we are uh, in that fight or flight mode, we are ready to go. And it could be fight, flight, or freeze, really. We want to remember the freeze part because that's tensing up too. That's tensing up and getting so tight and small and almost not even breathing because you're freezing as if to not be noticed so that you can survive. Same with fighting or fleeing. The body is stressed. It's upset. It's tensed up to fight. Think about to, you know, make a fist right now, like you were going to punch a wall or punch a punching bag. Like that's tense. Uh, and, and to flee, we'd have to, we'd have to really prepare to run. And all of the focus in our muscles and in our body would need to be on fleeing, on being able to run to get away. So this is not mother nature's way to keep us safe. And it kept our ancestors alive. And that's why they passed on those genes, because those were the survivors, and that's where we came from. But today, when people can live to 70 or 80, my mom's 80, how, it's 86 or 87 now. Like, um, people are living a long time. I, you know, I guess, used to be a lot shorter, especially from where we have come from in our ancestry. Um, but now people are living the 70s, 80s, 90s. I have a friend who lives in Maine and her mom uh, died last year at 102. Um, so my friend said, you know, I guess I'm going to have to work a little bit longer if I'm going to live anywhere near as long as my mom lived. So we're different now. And but our 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 genetics are still keeping us safe uh when we are stressed by our boss at work, we're ready to run as if we were running away from a tiger. So th- we need to actually use our mind and our brain to help us sort some of this out because we're not always in that survival mode of running from a tiger. And if we are going, if people are living to 70 or 80 years or more, and when the quality of life, not just mere, you know, survival is a priority, we pay a high price for this daily tension. Um, if we're going to carry on all this for 70 or 80 years, it leads to health problems big health problems like heart disease, poor digestion, back issues, headaches, hormonal ups and downs and problems, and to all of the psychological issues. And all you are all probably well aware of these things, you know, including anxiety and irritability and depression and others. And the number one way to reduce tension 
is through relaxation, right? Because that's just the opposite. Tense your fist right now and then relax it. In fact, there were studies way back um, by Herbert Benson, this is back in the day, and others, of course, this uh, research has been going on past Herbert Benson, but he really got it started back in the day, showing that relaxing routinely actually improves the expression of genes that help to control the fight or flight stress response. Do you hear that? Because many people who I am talking to out there and myself included back in the day, my fight or flight stress response, like maybe yours, was hair triggered. It didn't take much for my mind to think or my external experience. It could be small, but my body responded as if I was running from a tiger. It was life or death, fight or flight. So this idea that the studies that have been done that show that relaxing routinely, again, on purpose, actually improves the expression of the genes that help to control your fight or flight stress response. So maybe we can make that respond rather than react, right? Wouldn't that be awesome? So maybe by our relaxing on purpose, we can teach our fight or flight stress response to be a response and not a reaction. And besides its benefits for physical and mental health, relaxation, of course, feels great, doesn't it? We all say, oh, I wish I could just relax because we know how good it feels. In your mind right now, Think about how awesome it feels to soak in a tub, to curl up in bed, or to plop on the couch like a wet noodle after all the dishes are done, the laptop is put away, and the kids are all tucked in bed safe and sound. Oh my goodness, I even want to have a sigh of relief just reading that. Like, Oh, it feels so good to be done with the day or to soak in that tub or to curl up in bed. Finally, can relax. Of course, we all do what we can to have our life be less stressful, protect ourselves, accept what can't be changed, and gradually build shock absorbers inside our mind so we can become more stable to help steady life when it gets rocky and bumpy. And since the mind is not always willing to cooperate with our desire for change, let's keep the focus on the body. Because the mind, you know, we talk about that in a lot of different episodes, but today we're keeping the focus on the body for a bunch of easy ways that I'm going to give you to send the relaxation message to the brain. Now let's get to our changes that we can make so that we can send the relaxation message to our brain. We're focusing on the body, remember. So I want you to try these body-focused relaxation tips routinely. Remember, we can't make changes and eliminate bad habits or build new habits by just trying something once or twice. And a lot of healing from anxiety is about doing something, whether it's saying something to yourself or changing something in your life, doing it over and over and over again. It's kind of why you hear me say a lot of the same things over and over again. I want it to sink in. We don't change easily. So we need to get some routine going so that we can make these routine relaxation tips happen. First one I want to talk about is relaxing your tongue and your jaw. Think about it. Your mouth right now may be, it may be pretty tense, pretty tight. And I want you to relax your tongue inside your mouth. Just notice it. It may not have been relaxed. It may be something you don't think about, but do it. Uh, you might want to jot these down because it might, it might be hard to remember to relax your tongue, but try it. Relax the tongue and jaw. 
another way that we can send a relaxation message to the brain is by touching your lips. Now I know we're always trying to keep our hands away from our face and away from our mouth and our nose, but perhaps for this exercise, you can have clean hands and touch your lips. Our lips are very, very, very sensitive. And this actually sends a message to the brain that all is well. We may, you may notice that you, you may do this subconsciously or unconsciously, just touching your mouth. There may be a reason that it's hard for us to keep our hands away from our face. Touching our lips sends a message of all is well and calming to the brain. So give it a try with your clean hands, of course. Another one that you can do very easily, and you could do this right now, is to simply open your lips slightly. So rather than having a a pursed lips, you would just have your lips open slightly. Not not tidily zippered closed, but open slightly. Try it now. Might as well. You're just listening. You're not talking. And the next one, you know, you're going to say, I've heard you say this many times, and it's because it's very important. Do several long exhalations. I know in a previous episode recently, I did talk about the inhalation and the exhalation, the oxygen and the carbon dioxide balance, and what we do to balance ourselves out again is to do slower, longer exhalations. And this will really send a message of peace and calm, all is well to the brain. It's important that we do these things on purpose. This will relax the body because we're giving the message that everything's okay. We will not be able to relax until the brain also gets the message that it's okay. So we can physically do it, like making the fist right now. You can do this with me. Make a fist and then relax it. You can consciously on purpose, relax your muscles. And the more we can relax the body's tension, we are sending the message to the brain that everything is okay. When the brain gets the message that everything's okay, it can stop having the alarm button going. It can, the amygdala can stand down and we can revert back to our natural peace and calm. Another one that you can try is to recall the feeling of being with someone that you know who cares about you. See how that feels. Bring that up in your mind right now. The feeling of being with someone who you know cares about you. Maybe this is even a pet. It doesn't have to be a person. It can be a person, a pet, Bring that feeling up of being unconditionally loved. Somebody caring about you. That feeling will let the brain know that all is well. And you can't have both sides of your nervous system going at the same time. So when you are doing relaxation on purpose, you are stimulating your parasympathetic nervous system. And the final one that I have for you is to relax your diaphragm. And what is that? That's our Buddha belly style breathing. Relaxing our diaphragm, letting the belly relax, letting the, letting yourself have what I call a Buddha belly and letting those breaths flatten out the diaphragm. That stimulates the vagus nerve and tells the brain that all is well. The amygdala can stand down. And you can stop being in fight or flight or freeze mode. I hope that these have been helpful for you and that you will practice them. Remember, routinely, regularly, because these changes and new habits don't happen unless we do them over and over again. And eventually we will have eliminated the bad habits of stress and 
tension and we will have the new habits of being relaxed on purpose. And now for today's quote. Sometimes the most productive thing you can do is relax. And that's from Mark Black. I'll be back in a few more days with another podcast. Until then, be well and aloha. Thanks so much for joining us for today's episode of the Anxiety Coaches Podcast. Find more information at the anxietycoachespodcast.com.